live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Ryan, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova! Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Excellent! Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with episode 21 of the Turtle Power Podcast. We are back in full force. We've got Darby and Alex. Hey, 21, we can drink. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) What? (laughs) Apparently we've been doing it underage for twenty one, nothing. But that's no. okay. No. No. Um guys. Man, Ryan had like this whole train going of momentum and I just completely threw it off of its rails. Well, we're used to that. So it's what I worry. do. It's what I do. Bossa Nova. <laughs> um, um welcome back. Uh welcome to all of our new listeners. And Sadly. in case you haven't noticed yet, I am uh I am definitely battling a hardcore cold right now. Yeah. But the show must go on. So. Yeah. So am I. So right. Man, you guys, I'm in the cold state. What is wrong with you guys? So yeah, everybody keeps bringing it down here. It's a virus. <laughs> it's herpes. <laughs> That's true. Oh. Guys, I think let's just get let's just get right into it. April O'Neil, Channel Three Eyewitness News. We the got news. news. We had uh, a guest on. It was an incredible I- interview. It, it spanned yeah, over was, two uh, episodes. I was unavailable for that interview. You were. That's okay. Um, but uh, we just got a uh, an update from uh, from uh, Randall. Uh, they were out at uh, a show uh, just uh, a few weeks ago. Um, he was there with Kevin Eastman. There was it was at uh, Kamikaze 2013, by the way. Uh, that's where this was at. Uh, it's at the uh, Los Angeles Convention Center, and uh, this was at the beginning of November. And uh, he was there with Kevin Eastman, producer uh, Scott Mendick, and Randall. And uh, they were there for uh, a panel called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the Big Screen, world premiere of the TMNT documentary. Yeah, excited. It's, yeah, it's it's coming. It's pretty amazing. It's gonna um, happen. It's they, finally come they, together. Yeah, they discussed oh, damn, uh, and they showed a clip of the uh, upcoming ninety-four minute documentary entitled "Turtle Power: The Definitive History of the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles." Excuse me. Um, and uh, so they they've decided to keep the name. They they you know <laughs> after Randall was on the show with us. You know, I we, can't help but think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's a coincidence at all. You know, he's on this kick-ass podcast called Turtle Power Podcast. And he's like, I need to keep that. Like, Turtle Power is a pretty awesome name. Definitely need to keep it. No, I agree, and uh, it, it is a great name. <laughs> and uh, looks like they're going to keep it uh, as Turtle Power. Um, but. Uh, not only did we get news of uh, the documentary getting ready to be released finally, they also revealed that there may soon be an alternate cut of TMNT Brewing. Now, this was this was off of a um, an interview, or I guess a, a post on TheExaminer.com. And once again, as with all of our all of our discussion points here, we always include those in the show notes. Um, this was written by uh, Win Kang. Okay, um, so when it says an alternate cut of TMNT, I'm thinking 
the original Leo Ninja beat Graf in the fight. No, I see. I'm thinking the original <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't think they're talking about TMNT, the movie TMNT. What do you guys think? So you're you're asking if it's a, a rough cut of the the first movie or the TMNT CG movie? Yeah, it says an alternate cut. I'm thinking it's the original movie. I think that's what they're referring to here. I'm thinking it's an original cut also because aren't there sources out there that have like scenes that got taken out or stuff like that? Right. So sure. I'm uh, I I personally think I'm going to have to go with Darby's original answer and just say it's TMNT the really? animated and uh ah. it's an alternate cut scene with uh Leonardo impaling Raph <laughs> instead of just letting his sword miss and letting right. Raph dodge it it's it's uh-huh. just Tired of your crap, Raph. <laughs> Done. Right. So you mean in this version, Raph won't totally dominate Leonardo in the in their fight? Is he that didn't the dominate Leo. Leo he dominated him good. until he found out it was Raph Let's without his swords. Uh, I, I don't recall that version of the movie. I recall the version of the movie where Raphael wins at the end. Right. Well, he didn't. <laughs> Leo gave up. And faulty. Leo went great, got him but... when he found out it was him. Did you see the difference in the, his fighting before he realized it was Raph? He owned him. He owned him without his swords. He was like, "I don't even need my weapons to beat this guy." Yeah. Again, I I'm I'm hearing excuses. It's that's, that's it's it's I'm like hearing. it's like all right. It's like you, you you pick up this random girl, you have sex with her. Later <laughs> on, you find out. Yeah, during you find out it's your sister. It's not oh. going to be the same. Exactly. <laughs> You're not going to go nearly as hard as you were before. I exactly. think that's a little bit of a different situation. <laughs> I don't, I don't see how and, it's different at all. And by the way, you're, Darby, you're you probably shouldn't miss go. With your sword. You probably shouldn't go anymore at all, but <laughs> if it's your sister, um, it just depends on how far you've gone into. It. Oh, jeez. Wow. I mean, you, it's not like you can go back, you know, and take it back. <laughs> you might as well just go for it, you know. What oh, I, mean? I love how high class this show is. All right, so. Whether it's it's the original movie or it's TMNT, uh, either way, it's pretty cool. Um, they're bringing back. Uh, I'm excited. They're, yeah, they're 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 going after some of the older properties now. Um, you know, who knows? This could lead to many different um, reincarnations of of. Uh, <laughs> You know, old media that that you know we grew up with, whether it's any of the movies or um, the original um, animated series, or I mean, obviously they've been rehashing the the old uh, Mirage comics. Uh, you know, IDW has been re-releasing those, um, and you know, of course, in my mind, the ultimate would be for the Two K Three series, but we'll see. That'd be um, pretty sweet. Uh, last thing they talked about was the the new movie, of course. Uh, it says, to calm the negative rumblings amongst fans ever since the reveal of Fox's casting, uh, the trio reassured everyone that Megan Fox has always been a huge fan of the Turtles and that when you see her, you will be pleased and amazed and to hold your opinions until you see it and not to tr- uh, trust all the rumors you have heard. Um, and uh, they they also talk about Whoopi Goldberg being uh, in the film, uh, and that uh, today's technology will greatly add to the quality. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what we've. Um, I mean, we've been trying to preach that for a while here on the Turtle Power Podcast. Is uh, sure we've we've seen the you know the original script, and we've seen that uh, based on the the photos. We've gone over it for two whole episodes. Yeah, yeah. We we've um and since then we've seen, you know, the the leaked pictures, the leaked photos, um gotten the interviews with the actors and to see that, you know, they've definitely gone a different direction than that. And at this point, you know, we kind of have to wait and see. Yeah. I mean, this is nothing new. Yeah. This, we yeah. we've been hearing it for a while. Yeah. And whatever. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm still skeptic, upset, but yeah, I'm still kind of skeptic, too. It looks like from the pictures that we've seen so far, it seriously looks like a story involving 
Raph is trying to save the other three turtles with April's help, and that just bothers me. Um, Why does real, Raph got to Real that? quick on, on Raph, um, I uh, I got to watch uh, Hunger Games Catching Fire. Yes. Um, and you got, uh, to see Mr. Raph, yeah. got to experience wow. Raph. Uh, yeah. Well, look, man. The actor. Yeah, the actor. Um, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he got about as much screen time as he deserved, I think, which was about 60 seconds. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. Okay. They made it seem like it was a lot bigger role in that movie. Oh, I know. He played, he was on there literally, I, I would say 60 seconds would be pushing it. Uh, spoiler alert, a little late for that. He takes an, an uh, book. He dies instantly. Yeah, he does. Uh, arrow to the chest. It's amazing. And it wasn't even that dramatic. Like, he couldn't even, he didn't even die right. Oh. Yeah. Well, hopefully, Raph doesn't die. Yes, I was about to say. Uh, I, I have no <laughs> interest in trying to say that movie. <laughs> it's not awful. I just so. so it's not, I've well, seen I know, I mean, Darby, you have issues with Hunger much, Games they because keep coming you know, out and they keep saying they pretty much keep saying like, "All right, guys, just hold your opinions until later. Shut up, shut up, stop, stop talking." Like that's what they keep saying. It's not so much to say don't talk about it. It's more like it says to calm the negative rumblings amongst fans, which I still get that all the time. I, I still get the, right. the random fan, you know, coming up to me and saying, um, yeah, so what's up with that Ninja Turtles movie? I heard it's going to be terrible. Oh, man, we see it all day on Twitter and on yeah. Facebook. And yeah. It's just. You know what? If they didn't want negative feedback, maybe they shouldn't have hired Megan Fox to play April O'Neil. Yeah. They 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 had to realize that this was going to happen. Like this this isn't this is exactly what they want. What they couldn't get Emma Thompson, who was like on top of the world last year, hot redhead. Like couldn't get her, huh? Still is Emma Watson is is. I mean Emma Watson. Uh, what I said, Thompson. Uh, hey, they're both hot. Emma Whatever. Thompson. They're both hot. Yeah. <laughs> Either one. Maybe both. I'd rather have either of them. Exactly. Just well. switch them out throughout the movies. Either way, it's it's uh, it's good to see that uh, that the the Turtle Power documentary is, is looks to be coming uh, to fruition here, uh, right. hopefully That's sooner rather than part. later. That's the focus here. Is, can, you is put a, can you put a note into our boy and see if he can hook us up with Kevin Eastman? Like, hey man, think <laughs> think you well, nudge, nudge. We can. I guess nudge, we can go ahead and talk about that. Um, so March twenty fourteen. Um, here in <laughs> shut here. up man well, I love it, man. <laughs> I, i'm i'm seriously gonna sabotage this wedding i'm gonna i don't know uh, call it a bomb threat <laughs> well i and i know <laughs> that this is tough for you because you really wanted to go this year and so that's when i was looking for you know looking at for for 2014 that uh you know obviously knew that you'd want to go absolutely but, uh, March twenty fourteen, yes. MegaCon. What's up? Now, now for the, our listeners, this this isn't Alex trying to sabotage his own wedding. This is a... <laughs> no. I, tried I think that. Alex yeah. might. Yeah, I was gonna say Alex would actually try that. <laughs> um, no, this is this is uh, Alex uh, already has plans to be at a wedding that week, um, that weekend. Yeah. But so, what day? What day of that weekend? Because MegaCon is a multi. That's three days. I gotta go to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, it's March twenty second, so it's right in the middle. Yeah. I'm just middle. hearing a lot of excuses, Alex. They have an airport in Charlotte. Hey. They have an airport in Orlando. Okay, the wedding's done. Hop on a plane. Boom. There you go. You got a free place to stay. <laughs> here's here, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, it, it's the guy that's marrying uh, my wife's friend. Uh, is a uh, He's not going to care if you're there or not. No, no, no. He's Hispanic and he is, I believe, Venezuelan. One of the drug. He's he's one of the drug countries. That's all I know. (laughs) So all I'm saying is that I can set it up to where, you know, I call in an anonymous caller. You know, there's a bag, you know, of (laughs) 20 kilos, you know, and and uh, and he goes away for a little bit. (laughs) It would definitely get this. I'm in Colorado. I might know a guy. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> Full circle. Team man. effort. Team together. effort. Well, I'm sure your wife's just so happy to hear you talk about sabotaging her friend's wedding, so you can go to MegaCon. Uh, 
Well, I really. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Mary, we'll see. Like, at this point, it's a, it's a, we'll see. Um, but uh, um, if if you're unable to go, I'll I'll try to go. But uh, we do know um, confirmed for MegaCon are both Rob Paulson and Kevin Eastman. Oh uh, God, just, the two of the Holy Trinity, right there. Just a, uh, <laughs> um, that's a, uh, that's a four iron down five twenty eight from me. So. Uh, not very far, so uh, I'm definitely going to try to get in, uh, get some top-notch interviews. Oh, and uh, speaking of Rob Paulson, uh, if you haven't listened to um, Talking Tunes, uh, now is a good time to try it out because he had a recent show uh, with, um, an, it was an all Raphael show with uh, himself uh, Sean Aston and Nolan North and the Krang are voiced by mm. Nolan North, who has uh, done. Who is also the voice of Raphael in TMNT. He's done. Oh. He's, yeah, he's done the Uncharted series and Assassin. Like he's just. Um, he's also, you know, I read this when I when I, when I saw the uh, the show notes and I saw Nolan North. I decided to IMDb him, and I had no idea the guy was in General Hospital. Yeah, oh, that's just fun fact. And the Nolan North thing is is something that's just on my on my end because he has provided the voice of the Krang throughout the show, but for um, it's just you know, it's so like uh, digitized and everything, you just would never know it's him. I had no so idea. Got, it was Nolan so you North. got three Raphaels in that in that. Voice cast there. Well, he, this is just once again demonstrating that the fact that that Raphael is the best. I mean, no, either that how or many it's times just a sign that do you if you do Raphael's work? voice, you'll never get work anywhere else but video games. <laughs> well, I can't say that because you got Sean Astin. Has he done anything since he became the voice of Raph? Who cares? He was Rudy. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> he was Rudy. And he was Mikey. He was Sam Weiss. Uh, Shut up. And he was Sam Weiss. The guy is amazing. That's the thing, though. So underrated. Yeah, he is. He's He's uh, he actually does a lot of. uh, Sino man, I know, I know. He does a lot of um, uh, political stuff, uh, also. Um, Yeah, he he has that that network now. Yep. Let's get into the the show proper now. Um, Well, no, 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 no. Before we do that, we have one other thing we want to talk about. (laughs) Darby. uh, What? You you've been uh, you've been uh, uh, I guess exploring the world of broadcasting lately, haven't you? Okay, uh, you could say that on one of your your recent shows. Um, you had a little segment on there about um, uh, not so much a segment; it was more of a reference. And I was I was hoping you could please explain more on this. Ninja Turtles are nice. Am I about to be thrown under the bus here? It sounds like I'm being like an intervention or something is going on. No, no, no. This is no intervention. Just uh, I was wondering if you, if you could enlighten us on Ninja Turtles on Ice. Okay. Um, funny story. So wait, which show was that? Was that um was that my sports radio show? Yes. I believe that was my sports radio show, Two Guys yes. Sports Rewind, that I do every Monday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, so, plug. Oh, there'll be there'll be plenty more shameless ones coming out. Don't you fret, my friend. Follow us at Two Guys Rewind. Yeah. Anyway, um, so my co-host Jesse, uh, I mentioned something about, and this was on the air too about. Oh yeah, he was like, oh yeah, why don't you go ahead and plug your podcast? I was like, ah, uh, it's the Turtle Power Podcast. Um, Alex is pretty cool. Ryan kind of puts me to sleep sometimes. I listen to him when my insomnia kicks in. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But okay, so he said something about Ninja Turtles on Ice. And he tells me that apparently he saw Ninja Turtles on Ice. But this is where it gets better. Because he's around our age. He was really young back in the day when the Turtles were at their peak. And I think what he actually ended up seeing was the Coming Out of Their Shells live tour. Okay. And the whole reason he called it Ninja Turtles on Ice 
was because it was in an arena that usually just has on ice shows. Uh. Yeah, exactly. So he told me that after I sent you the tweet and you're like, oh, we need to look into this. And I was like, yeah, we definitely need to look into it. And then he was like, oh, yeah, it was weird. Like, you know, they had all these musical instruments and they're skating around and shredders. I was like, dude, that was not Turtles on Ice. I really didn't think Turtles on Ice ever happened. Okay. To our knowledge, that still hasn't happened. And I believe you are but correct. That, um, yeah. Now, this leads me to my next question, as uh, which is, why in the blue hell haven't we seen Ninja Turtles on Ice yet? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what? That is an excellent and fair question. I believe with the new Ninja Turtles coming out now, It'll happen. Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon loves to put their characters on ice. I feel They've like done the shows before. I feel Nick, like Nick this is coming. On ice. Yes. And yeah, w- will there be some coming. sort of um, uh, collaboration with Vanilla Ice? Perhaps. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, we, uh, maybe we, they're skating on him. We are certain on ice. We, we or, know that he. Maybe is, they infuse vanilla in the ice itself. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, the ice already does look white, so that that helps. Right, but it doesn't have the scent of vanilla. Now, ooh, yes, you gotta have the scent, not just the, the scent taste, of but the scent. Right, exactly. Nice, I like it. I like what what's going on here. Um, could we uh, <laughs> perhaps incorporate the uh, Ninja Turtle uh, Blue Bunny ice cream bars? What about the bubble gum eyes? Yes, with the, the bubble gum eyes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Eyes. Yep, absolutely. Oh, so, so good. Okay. Nickelodeon, I honestly make it think, happen. like, I can already see, like, the Ninja Turtle ones coming out now, the the ice cream bars, where it's like, you know, their teeth are showing, but Donatello's got, like, uh, like a strip of chocolate in the middle of his teeth for the gap. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I like it. <laughs> and that would be the one all the kids want to eat, because Donnie's awesome. What can I say? So let's uh, go into video game news. All right, so I had uh, now. If you guys recall from last episode, uh, we we talked about the what I like to call the Nick Turtles video game. This kind of distinguishes it from the the Out of the Shadows uh, video game that uh, we're still waiting on a PlayStation version for, and we haven't or, gotten any further updates on from the Facebook page. But maybe uh, uh, maybe the fact that, that that one's named Out of the Shadows distinguishes it from the other. Yes, that's true. I mean, you can look at it either way. It's just called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game, or just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the video game, or just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm not sure. They didn't get to call it it. the Nick Turtles video game. Not even a little. Well, guess what? They didn't get get creative with the game at all. Why would you expect them to get creative with the title? That's a good point. Um, So uh, we we talked about uh, that. No, we were not going to be buying this game. Uh, But... Uh, I did say uh, if I can try to f- uh, rent it, I would. And guess what? I did. Uh, they actually you know, had it I on saw Redbox. My, I saw it at my Redbox, but it was for the Wii. And I was just like, you yes. know, I have a Wii, but I really don't feel like doing that. Oh, you, sh- you should at least try it out on the Wii. Um, I mean, I don't regret playing it. <laughs> it was Yeah, you do. No, no, no. For two bucks? I mean, come on. Because trust me, you're not going to need it for more than a day. Um, so I did get it on the Xbox, uh, 360. Um, so uh, let's see, where do I even begin? Um, when I first started it up, uh, it definitely had comparisons to the, the 2003 series of video games that came out. Um, uh, now that's not, that's a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing in the terms of that, um, those were some fun games. Um, not so good in the fact that uh, it still looked like it was from that era of video games. Um, so at this point now that the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One have come out uh, from two generations prior. So um, like the map, 
the 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 overall world map where you get to choose uh which you know um which mission you want to you want to play it looks like it's straight out of the playstation 2 version of those uh 2k3 games um the fighting yeah. style is very similar um uh, it's a button masher um not as polished though it's not as advanced uh you could do more um uh i guess uh more technical moves on those older games um whereas this it's it's really just it's just smash button mashing just smash the x button the uh the writing uh not very good uh kind of seems like they developed the story uh over a weekend um the cut scenes um not as good uh, are they comic book style or are they like animated? They've got two different kinds. They've got um, they've got some some CG cut scenes, but mm-hmm. the mouth doesn't match the voice, uh, and that actually leads me to my my biggest uh, gripe with the game, probably, uh, just because it's it's so not good. Um, and it's funny enough that um, uh, the Turtles fan club. Uh, TMNT Master, they just, uh, if you're part of that program, you know, they send you the emails that you're supposed to hit the share button and it uh, shares uh, different stories. And funny enough, they just shared this one about the voice talent recording audio for this game. And uh, that is not something to be excited about. Um, it Wasn't Jason Biggs too big to be in this game? Uh, 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 yeah, and he wasn't the only one. Um, there was there's uh so first of all even before you get to the actors themselves um it sounds like the voice recording was done on an iphone in the back of a cab um maybe it was no it wasn't uh based on that uh (laughs) that's the problem is that based on the the video that they um and the, the the photos and stuff that they had they had just sent out um it was done in a studio but it was um is not good. Um, the, yeah, they're going for that gritty feel, you know. Oh Fair. no! It, I mean the 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 voices are all unmatched in terms of their uh, their volume. Uh, there's you know a bunch of spikes, um, you know popping noises, and mm. um, right. it literally it's looks just, like they put it together in in about five minutes. Well, that's probably what they did. I mean, they're just trying to strike while the iron's hot. You know? Yeah, they're it's especially Nickelodeon who doesn't care about their video games. They're just trying to. Like Alex said, strike while it's hot, but also just like get a game out as soon as possible. Yeah, and Activision's maybe like, Activision, all right, maybe dollar Activ- sign, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Activision's yeah. just like, well, we have this for three games. We don't want it anymore because it's not going to be popular in a year, so let's just get it out now. Yep. Well, <laughs> we've got... Even though uh, they're the reason it's not going to be popular. You mentioned the voice talent. Um, it's everyone but Jason Biggs, right? No, it's, it, not. it's not. Um. First one, Leonardo is yeah. It's it's not done by Jason Biggs. It's done by a voice actor named Dominic uh, Catrambone. Trombone. Catrambone. Trombone. Trombone. Rusty trombone. Now, with <laughs> <laughs> finally somebody heard it. Was it uh, was it bad? No, but it didn't sound like Leonardo. Was he Spanish? Took you out of this it, especially in the like, fact that. Was he a- was he Italian, Spanish? I mean, this this Leo, did Leo sound like a gangster a little bit? It, it it just didn't sound like Jason Biggs. And when the rest of the turtles sound like the Nick <clears throat> Turtles, and just Leonardo is different, that's what yeah. takes you out of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Leo ruins it again. It, it it would make sense if he sounded a little bit like a pimp, uh, since uh, Dominic Catrabone did a voice um, for Pimp My Ride, so. Huh. Just saying. Wow. Go. Just saying. And he also did Hannah Montana Spotlight uh, World Tour. Top huh. class voice acting. There, there. There's the, I was about to say Nickelodeon connection, but not exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> not quite. Um, <laughs> Whoops. Let's see. Uh, going down the list, uh, you still got Sean Astin as Raphael, Greg Sipes as Michelangelo, Rob Paulson as Donatello. Uh, Mae Whitman is April O'Neil. Hoon Lee is Splinter. Uh, 
uh, Darby's uh, best friend forever, uh, Kevin Michael Richardson as Shredder. Still waiting on that call, Kevin. <laughs> Karai is uh, all still played by Kelly Hu. Baxter Stockman is still played by Phil Amar. And uh, Dog Pound, though, is played uh, not by uh, his normal uh, voice actor, Clancy Brown, but rather by uh, Fred Tattashore. And Who has done what? Fred Tattashore has done... Uh, he's done voices for the Turtles. Uh, he's done the voice of uh, General Gato in uh, TMNT. Uh, do you remember the episode um, of the Knicks Turtles where Shredder was trying to buy the uh, weapons from the Russians? He was the Russian? He was the Russian. Hmm. Probably most notably, he was uh, Samuel L. Jackson in Team America. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> <Fun fact. laughs> if that helps. But uh, as far as the gameplay goes, and I'll, I'll tweet out some, some photos that I took. Of you just going, oh, this sucks. No, not, oh, not pictures of me. And then going, oh, this oh, is awful. Good. God, even Raph sucks. Okay, so, uh, let, yeah, I'll talk about right. the gameplay a little bit. Um, it sucks? Okay, next question. Uh, fighting. Uh, mashing X to hit. A is to jump. Y is to throw. B is to sp- uh, do a special um, a special hit. Did you play any other characters other than Raph? Okay, so yes. Um, the, the Turtles, um, it's a similar uh, setup to Out of the Shadows, where all four Turtles are constantly playing at the same time, and you quick switch between them with the with the D-pad. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, you, you, you know they're depending on um, on the uh, the situation. Yeah, sometimes you want to um, switch to different turtles, or or if your you know your turtle uh, dies, then you just switch over to the other one, and then you finish fighting the boss or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, and do they come back like at the end of the level after they die, or is it like yes. the old school Nintendo where no. they're just gone forever? No, as soon as the level's over, then they're back. Uh. Um, one of the cool things I liked about the game was uh, it borrowed a mechanic from the uh, uh, Turtles in Time game where, where you throw you know, them at the screen throw them at the screen uh. And, uh, this game That's made cool. that very easy to do um, once you've hit run up a, Y, a, run a up Y, run up Y, run up Y, done. No, not that easy. You have to <laughs> hit a guy a couple times, and then a little Y button will show up above their head, and then uh, that means that you can throw them. And depending on where you move your stick, that's the where you're, that's the direction he'll throw the the bad guy. But if you th- hit down, it'll throw it right at the screen. And that was kind of the fun thing is just throwing like you throw a foot soldier at the screen, then you throw a crane at the screen, and then you throw a you know a mouser or no, I guess you can't throw the mousers at the screen. But are the but, mousers still like one hit and they're dead? Uh they had two kinds of mousers. Yeah, they had just simple ones and they had some some uh some that took a couple hits, but um yeah, for the most part they're they're very easy. So there are collectibles in the game. Um there's a couple different kinds. There's uh, crystals um, that are used for uh, turtle upgrades. Um, and then uh, there's also mutagen cans for unlocking upgrades. And you can actually find them uh, in the levels um, using audio cues. Um, the crystals, um, if you get close, you'll hear like a wah, wah, wah type noise. Uh, and whereas with the uh, mutagen cans, it's more of a, a warning beep, um, uh, like a bomb's about to go off or something. And then you use Donatello's uh, visual binocular thing to uh, find them. You do get scored uh, after every level. Uh, there's a, a local leaderboard um, that uh, that you can input your your initials <laughs> uh, old school style um there are uh cheat codes i didn't know any of them because i was renting the game uh there's 16 levels total uh that's uh including the boss fights um i gotta talk about the hit detection uh it's really terrible at times um 
me for the most part it's it's okay but uh there are times where um you just be wailing on a guy and nothing happens it just gets annoying after a while um and then the computer controlled turtles are pretty useless mostly they just stand around um but when they are attacked uh their life bar is hardly affected so that's good uh that you don't have to uh try to protect them while you're trying to defeat the other bad guys. So you can, you can also pick up, you know, like shurikens and other, other pickups and you can throw them. Um, the problem is, is that if you pick them up, then you can't switch. Like you pick up, uh, uh, one thing and then you pick up a second thing. You can't switch back to the first thing. You have to run out of the second thing that you picked up before you. Oh my God. It's so Uh, stupid. What is this? Like 1992? Seriously. Seriously. Um, it's pretty much just smash, like I said, just smash, smash, smash the yeah. X button, uh, and you'll make your way through it, no problem. <laughs> um, it, it was really just kind of a work your way through game. Um, the boss fights were very, very simple. Um, never, it, never died once, you know, where I lost all four turtles or anything like that. Um, say probably the, the toughest one, there was a, 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 a giant mouser. And it was, it was, I think it was kind of like a weird glitch where it was stuck in the, um, it was in the subway and it was kind of like stuck in a certain situation where it was, it was very hard to get to. And it wasn't even a mini boss. It wasn't even the final boss. And, um, it was just, yeah, it was like incredibly hard to get in a hit, uh, before it would like knock you down or whatever. But, um, then you get to the end of course you gotta face shredder at the end um but uh interesting thing was um spoiler alert for anybody that uh actually wants to play this game um you don't defeat the shredder really you as you're playing him you you're, you're fighting and then uh he just runs away that's so like he just kind of jumps uh, and he's like I'll get you turtles, and he just jumps that away, and he so like jumps out of his... shot. It is ridiculous. So that's yeah. awful. It was that's it was very awful. underwhelming. I mean, even for that game, <laughs> it was just it kind of ended with like a oh really that was it. Yeah, it's they it could have done so much better. <laughs> so. I hate that crap. That's stupid. That's stupid. I don't know if that's the beers talking, but that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So it 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 pretty much lived up to everything I hoped it would be. Well, that's good. So uh, did yeah, it have I, any kind of like online multiplayer? Or, um... Nope, no. Uh, no just online. local. It's just local. They do have local multiplayer, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, like I said, I was expecting it to be how it was, so I wasn't surprised. But yeah, still. It's uh, it had some fun moments, but definitely do not buy this game. It's worth a rent. It's le- it's a worth a one day Redbox rent because that's as long as it's going to take. I mean, I took my time through it and I got through it in <sighs> four hours. And I took my time, like I was not rushing through. Um, and the uh, uh, one uh, I will say one other cool thing. Uh, I think it was the last stage or second to last stage was um, you're going through the like New York and uh, you actually see second time around, you see uh, April's um, dad's uh, antique shop. So uh, that was cool. Oh, and um, uh, there are a lot of uh, easy achievements uh, in this game. So um, if you're trying to get your, your Xbox uh, gamer score up, uh, this is a good game for that, for sure. To wrap it up, I would definitely say just uh, don't ever get, yeah. a, get a red box, do it one day, just for fun. You know, enjoy it for what it's worth. And just for send fun, it back but it's out not the fun. World. So, right. Just to say you did. Just to say you did it. It's kind of like doing drugs. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do drugs. (laughs) Please. (laughs) All right, let's get, uh, let's uh, move on out of video game news and into comic book news. 
I strike two on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. Already the pudgy ones are starting to panic. Raph loves this stuff. He's not alone. Why is he narrating? Is he crazy? Hardcore crazy. I love these guys! Uh, so comic book news. Uh, coming out in November, we've had a, a handful of uh, comics uh, come out. Um, classics, of uh, uh, Volume 2, Number 1. Uh, that's Color Classics. Uh, you know, re-releasing those uh, Mirage um, uh, issues uh, now in color. Um, Do we know why City Fall? Oh, has sorry. That's been... that's. Uh, let's see. So that would be that would actually be Mirage number twelve. Is what consists of that one. What were we gonna say, Dom? Do we know why City Fall has been like pushed back another week and a half or so? Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much when it comes out in two days, and I can't do my review on how City Fall ends, and I know you guys haven't caught up to it. Yeah, well, we're doing our City Fall. Um, we're gonna so that we talked a couple episodes ago about doing a big comic books. Um, uh, I guess IDW comic series uh, review update uh, with everybody. We're gonna do that in our uh, in our next episode. So look forward to that coming up here. Uh, so that will encompass everything up through uh, City Fall. So issue 28. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the, um, uh, the micro series as part of that as well. Um, okay. uh, let's see. We've got, uh, for, for any of you who are reading the uh, animated series, the... New animated adventures. Uh, I guess issue five just came out, and uh, let's see, we've got uh, Ultimate Collection Volume Five. We did get an update that it is going to be coming out. It, well, it was originally supposed to be January of 2013, so it's a year late. Jesus. And that uh, includes issues tw- uh, 56 through 62 of the uh, original uh, Mirage Volume 1, uh, which is the second half of the City at War series. So, And then just today, uh, I got uh, TMNT Classics Volume 7, which collects uh, Mirage uh, Volume 1 issues 45 through 47 and six short stories from Shellshock. You guys get any new comics since we last spoke? Not... Any like outside of the turtles, still just pl- still just playing catch up. Yep. I've been going through the um, the last one I've been reading was the um, um, Kevin Eastman's 2012 annual, which uh, is cool because it's got the um, you know the old style his old style you know art in there. It's not the uh, it's not the the modern IDW version of the art. It's it's you know it's bringing you back for sure. So, but that's a long book. That was like that was like sixty pages or something like that. So, all right. So let's um let's move out of comic book news and into collecting news. From Playmates. Collecting news. So. Uh, Remember when I was talking about that New York Comic Con uh, Ninja Turtles action figure contest that they were doing there? Was As a it? matter of fact, I do. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I won. What? Winner. Winner. What? Chicken dinner. Uh, and actually, one of our listeners, Gary. Uh, it he, was Rick. Gary uh, Rickleman on Facebook. He uh, he won, too. So yep. I like Gary. Nice. Gary leaves cool post. Gary, yeah. you're awesome. Absolutely. So, so what did you win? Uh, I don't know yet. We don't know which one we won. Um, we were instructed to email a certain email address uh, with our address, and then uh, they'd be sending it to us. So, the cool thing is, if either, if neither of you like each other's toys, you can always just swap them. We could. Um, I'll tell you what, though. What I'm thinking about doing is uh, giving mine away on the show. 
Oh, so. giveaway, giveaway. Uh, see, okay, this is the way you have to have like the like the Spanish show where it's like, wah, 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 you know, and then just have yep. like the half naked yep. chick like show her breast. <laughs> like, let's do this. <laughs> Well, you can get yeah. away with that on Spanish TV. I wish American TV was more like Spanish TV. Yeah, it's not quite evolved that to that yet. Oh well. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, so uh, we'll see what, uh, what I get in the mail here. Hopefully, it's before the next uh, episode. Um, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> we literally just found out that we won um, yesterday or the day before. So, uh, cool. and it's been a while since. Uh, New York Comic Con, so uh, hopefully we get those here soon. Um, and then uh, I think I smell a, a little contest uh, uh, coming in our future. So, um, guys, have you seen these dojo toys? Yes, at the stores. Those are yes. weird and just blatant knockoffs of other toys that have already existed for years. All right. So if you, if, for our listeners, if you haven't seen these yet, um, they are uh, the Ninja Turtles um, uh, weapons, uh, but they're foam. Okay. Um, they've so got... They can't hurt each other. Yeah, so you took can just, long to come you up with just that idea wail too, on each other as much as you want because they're foam, and uh, they do have some sort of rigid in inside to uh, you know keep it from just ripping apart. But I don't know how long they would really last. I mean, oh, yeah. with us growing up, they would have lasted like one battle. That's it. Yeah, probably not very long. Um, God, the nunchucks are uh, have a really thin piece of black. Uh, cord that goes between the two handles. Uh, the bow staff does have the um, retractable switchblade. Yep. Uh, Leonardo does have a uh, katana sword. It's just one, so you'd have to get two of them. Well, but, yeah. Uh, oh, they make money. And then Raphael's size. That just really bothers you, doesn't it? Really bothers me. Um, so for you ha- for those of you who have not seen this um guys how many um how many prongs are there on on a, on a side overall two. overall there on are. one side there are two or three depending on your side mm. so you want us to say three on a normal side you've got the the one in the middle, and then you got one on the left and one on the right that are shorter. On these, there is only one short one. To and be fair, now, because uh, uh-huh. I mean, I saw, I saw that you were bitching about that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you go on our Twitter page, see if I can find this real quick. A gentleman was nice enough to take a picture for us. And apparent, oh, I wish I could find it because it's not popping up on the page. A gentleman was nice enough to take a picture for us, and in the Raphael figurine, you know, action figure, the some of his extra weapons and his weapon rack are the sides with two prongs that that toy is. <sighs> All right, I've got it right here. Let's yes, you do. It's right there, man. Yes, I see the ones he's talking about. Okay. But. There it is. Have you ever seen him use these on the show? No. But they're probably, maybe it's just an excuse to give kids less things to poke their eyes out with. Have you ever seen Raphael. Or an excuse to sell more things. Have you ever seen Raphael use those size? Ever. No, nope. but I mean, <laughs> come on, man. This is like classic turtles. Have you ever seen, you know, freaking Dr. Elephant in any of the episodes? Have you ever seen? I mean, I know. No, maybe it's he just him in the comics. Maybe you know, he did. Who if, cares? It's it's just there because it's because it's <laughs> Raphael. It's it's Ryan's boy's weapon. You know, it's I, I love Donatello's bow staff in the dojo. Yeah, boys. with the switchblade that comes out. Yeah. Cut all your friends. I think it's pretty sweet. And the right. katana is like, oh, it's the katana. Like, <laughs> you know, and the nunchucks are, oh, it's the nunchucks. Like, you know, but and those then, are the only two that I think that 
changed. But who cares? It's fine, Brian's man. It, it, Brian's a little upset about it. Yeah, I'm a little upset about it. If you, if there's, <laughs> you, there's no let's, let Ryan, let's let Ryan vent. Let's let Ryan vent. Get I some just, passion. Why? What's it's the today. point? What is the point? What, like, well, you clearly, in order to become a master, you have to master the half side. Or the three quarter side, or the <laughs> two thirds side. side, the two thirds uh, side, the dual <laughs> two thirds side. Right. <laughs> which, which the way they package them, it's almost like uh, it's like when Donatello had the size and he put them together to make a bow staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of the way they're packaged too. You, you know what? And this is just uh, I don't That's know if you'll have to episode, edit it. You you may have to edit it. I don't know, but. Your the raft raft size kind of look like a rabbit, and yeah, they kind of do. I don't mean Is there like a vibrating feature on there. Yes. Oh I, man! Don't mean like the bunny rabbit. Uh, it's a vibrating feature on those sides. I'm that, just saying. Uh, pretty sure I, I mean, saw that in Adam and Eve's catalog. That uh, right. that does now explain why they look the way they do. <laughs> and we can move on. So. <laughs> But also, 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 before we move on, I want to talk about how much I hate the fact that they have the inflatable training hands, which are just blatant ripoffs of like the sock em boppers that came out like sock 20 years ago. Sock exactly. Boppers. They're sock em boppers that have been painted green. Sock em once and you bop them twice. Sock exactly. <laughs> exactly. You remember? Heck yeah, I remember. And the Ninja Turtles training bag, which is just the punching bag. I swear to God, the kid in that picture is two and a half feet tall. <laughs> yeah, Because probably. every time, I mean, you know, this was one of the few things Ryan had a problem with that I didn't growing up. You get a punching bag. Ryan is like six times the size of that punching bag when we were little kids. It's a kicking bag for me. Yeah. It's, no, it, no, it's not even a kicking bag. It's like a shooing away with your foot, like <laughs> a little cat, like get out, get away. And, and. I swear to God, the kid is punching up, too, when he's punching yeah. his bag. So he has to be about two and a half feet tall. Yeah. There might be some Photoshop going on there. Possibly. Just a wee bit. Yeah. Just a wee bit. Um, so and I don't know if you guys had a chance to, but uh, one of our listeners, uh, Leo Tony. Um, mm-hmm. Leo Tony. Cool name. Uh, Say it to Alex uh, Cat. Yeah, uh, I have a problem with this, is, but I'm going to let you get to it first. Yeah, he uh, gave us a, a heads up uh, to vote for the, uh, the Toy Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I did, and uh, and the Turtles were winning by far when I voted. Guess what? They lost. Who did uh, they, they lose to? They lost to the Rubber Ducky and Chess. Okay, see, I problem number it. one. Problem number, no, 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 no. Problem number one. Chess is not a toy. Mm-hmm. It is not. It is a game. It is a Thank board you. game. Thank you. Um, I can go back a little further. 2012 inductees, Star Wars action figures, mm-hmm. and Domino's. Domino's is not a toy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it can be. Maybe the, that's, it's that's a game. That's, that's a fine game. line, depending on how you do it. But, yeah, it's, it's Have, like, it's a, a game, game section oh, of you're the hall. saying... Stack Let's go to the 2011 and, and knock them down that that way. That's this is more where of a I toy. have the real problem. My biggest issue: 2011. You got the dollhouse, excellent. You got Hot Wheels, absolutely. Yeah. And then you have blanket. Just blanket. What? That's, that's it. Blanket. Ooh. I'm sorry. Not a toy. No. Blanket is not a toy. I'm sorry. It's 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 not a toy. It's a. It, I don't understand how they how they determine. It, this I guess is, because the picture of the blanket has a kid using it as a cape. Really? This, I mean, he is playing with it. It has become I, a toy. I guess so. Okay, but here, here's the what thing. about what about a they blanket have, fort? Like, okay, fine. They should just have cardboard box. There's cardboard right. box in here. I would right. play the crap out of a cardboard exactly. box. Exactly. My cats agree exactly. with that one, by the way. And in 2011, they had three inductees. Why couldn't they have three inductees in this particular scenario? Mm-hmm. Like, why aren't they consistent with the amount of inductees that they, that they have? 
Yeah. Like it's three and then two, then two. It's not like the 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 turtles didn't have a sufficient enough a sufficient number of uh, of votes. Sometimes some toys aren't you know appreciated until later. I mean, Ball was just inducted back in two thousand and nine. Meanwhile, Atari was inducted back in two thousand seven. That's true. That's true. I mean, Rubber Ducky, I can see, I can see Rubber Ducky, and Rubber Ducky, you think you would think would have been inducted. Back Way in earlier, nine or something with the Viewmaster, or ninety-eight with the Tinker Toys. Right, exactly. Lionel Trains, two thousand six. What? So are we? Are we saying that we are? Um, Jump rope is not. Uh, <laughs> are we saying I that? I would buy uh, before I buy Jump are, Rope as a toy. Uh, discrediting the Toy Hall of Fame. Uh, I am a little bit. I mean, there are some legitimate. But I mean, all right. So I think we all had GI Joes when we were growing up, right? Yeah. No. No. All right. Well, you're a poor soul. My dad, my dad was a Vietnam vet. Probably didn't want any flashbacks with the toys. That's though. understandable. So I'm not. Yeah. They're, they're, all right. That that's understandable. I had the turtles. Um, and the, yeah. GI Joes were lame compared to the turtles. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, GI Joes were fun because of the bungee like limbs that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, I but sure. yeah, it, they they were inducted in 2004 though. And we know how far GI Joes date back. Yep. So, and Plato was just inducted in 1998. So it's like, all right. Dude, I mean, dude, dude, did you see what was in 2008? Do you see this skateboard? Stick. Oh, the stick. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. stick. A stick a in 2008. What that comes out of a tree? Stick. Yeah, I mean. I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm done. The, card, no. the cardboard box was inducted in 2005. <laughs> By the way. A stick? <laughs> no, I mean. Stick! Uh, uh, Lincoln Logs, though. Those are good. I had a lot of fun with Lincoln, do- Lincoln Logs. Stick! Which came Which came first, the stick or the ball? Uh, according stick. to this, <laughs> the, the, well, the stick got inducted first. Did it? But it also came before the ball because trees have been growing longer than mankind. No, I'm not saying which one actually was invented first. Which one was inducted first? The stick. Oh, uh, the stick was inducted first. Okay. The ball was just inducted in 2009. I would also say that that's a travesty. Yeah, the ball should have gotten in sooner. Well, the, yeah, the fact yeah. that the ball Tonka was Trunks... inducted with the Game Boy. Nice. Yeah. And the stick was inducted... After the Easy Bake Oven, <laughs> and after and after no wait, just before crayons no, no no after way after crayons crayons are not toys, crayons are not toys they're writing utensils. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of problems with this whole toy Hall of Fame thing. It's just like the baseball Hall of Fame. You know Barry Bonds is going to get inducted. I just looked at the I just looked at the ballot this uh, earlier today. Yeah. I posted it on Facebook. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, uh, it's uh, you I know you got so Rafael Palmero, Sammy Sosa, steroids, steroids, uh, Mark McGuire, you know, steroids. You know what? Barry Bonds, steroids. You know what? Roger Clemens, steroids. Rochester, so I'll, I'll I'll let him have it. Let you him have, have what? The, Rochester the glory? had the Boy Hall of Fame. Whatever. You know where it's going to be in about 20 years? Orlando, because that's where all the museums go. Yeah. <laughs> all the tacky ones, like the toy ones and Ripley's Believe It or Not, um, all go I'm, to Orlando. I'm hoping they will still move the um, the WWE Hall of Fame down here. There's been talk about them doing that. They should Probably. just move to, uh, to Hogan's Restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Then, we but, went there. We had a nice brewski. We did have a nice brewski there. Had a brewski. Like you said there. Yep. We did not see Hulk Hogan though. No. We did not see him there. No. Um so um uh, National yeah, Toy Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame about. I don't know. Is it a thing like baseball where you if you don't make it in one year you you are up for the ballot the next year? I would hope I so would since hope the so. stick just got inducted in freaking two thousand. Yeah, I, I gotta think ball <laughs> and stick were on the ballot before two thousand eight. So <laughs> Is it a one and and done? I don't know. I mean, the dollhouse just got inducted. Erector. Well, how the heck did the erectors get it? You know what? Is there like a statute of limitations to this? Does that mean you have to wait like 20 years before you retire as a toy to become a member of the Toy Hall of Fame? 
No, because they're still G.I. Joe toys. They're still Hot yeah, Wheels. Absolutely. They haven't retired. Barbie's still around. There's still bicycles, for crying out loud. You know who's going to get uh, Stretch Armstrong next time? Oh, Stretch Armstrong was so much fun. Okay, he, was a, he was a great Armstrong accessory with my, toy, with my uh, TMNT figures. Come on. He was a fantastic guy. Yeah, no, he was a good play along. Like, yeah, he was always like the monster that would stretch out and attack the turtles. And no, then, he was an ally for me because I had uh, he, was, he was a monster because I had the giant Stretch Armstrong. See, I had the, I had the smaller smaller Stretch Armstrong, and then I had a giant Rambo. Sure. Um, and the <laughs> giant Rambo was always always he was he was a dick man. And then I had uh, and then I had a, a battery powered that Godzilla that you put water in, and it used to shoot out smoke like it would it would just it, it would create smoke. And uh, those were the uh, my villains, aside from just the standard turtle villains that I had. Yeah, but the problem with Stretch Armstrong was that he was great until he got, popped a leak. Yeah, well, clearly you didn't know how to play with your Stretch Armstrong. And I I guess I did have one at one point. Ryan's a scientist. At any moment, you know he's going to cut it open to see what's inside. That's true, but I used to I used to That's I used what to I do with up. everything I own. I used to open my TVs when I was younger and didn't yeah. mean Jack. Oh yeah, kasha! It, don't you work for a TV company now? No. I just, yell at t- I just yell at TV companies. <laughs> I thought there was some sort of cable company job that you had. Ah. No, I wish. I didn't have internet thanks to Cox Cable. By the way, Cox Cable, you suck ass. Uh, you that's suck why I wasn't there. They suck their namesake, if you will. They're, right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> we suck yeah. our namesake. Here I am thinking it was a problem with my modem and it was a maintenance issue and everybody in the area was down. It's fantastic. Oh, nice. Cool. Nice. Did you ever see one of my favorite Penny Arcades? I mean, we're getting way off topic. But one of my favorite Penny Arcade comics was when Gabe calls his internet service provider and he's like, what the hell is this bull crap? I, you know, I paid for, you know, 20 gigs of, uh, you know, just 20 gigs or something like that, like of uh, power or whatever. And they're like, no, sir, you paid for up to 20 gigs. He's like, fine. Then I'm going to pay you up to. 50 bucks could be more could be a lot less or something <laughs> oh and those suckers are notorious for throttling your data too they yeah. throttle my data all the time because i use I'll around 50 pay. to 60 like gigs uh, up to 100 gigs a month those bastards yeah, they throttle me so hard yeah you stream a lot of that. it's gone down a lot less since he's gotten married <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gone up more <laughs> it's, yeah i was gonna say it's gone up more and now and now it's <laughs> And now with this particular site that I've come into contact with, it's going to go. <laughs> oh, man, we got way off. Poor Ryan and all of his editing. <laughs> There's nothing to edit, Ryan. This is gold. This is, this is gold. pure uh, drunk gold. It's horrible. <laughs> Poach just fell off the bed. It's so horrible. <laughs> oh, jeez. And uh, actually, you know what? We're going to pause right there. Uh, that We recorded this uh, the week of thanksgiving here in the states and uh w- let's just say we ended up going way too long um ended up being like a three-hour show we still didn't get any, everything in there so uh i've been adding in little bits uh here and there i'm not sure if uh, uh you the listeners uh were able to catch on to those uh little audio inserts but um uh yeah, so what we're going to do is uh, end this episode here, and uh, we're going to actually split this into three episodes. We're going to have this one now. Um, the next episode will be all about the Nick Turtles with a uh, special interview. Um, and then uh, uh, that'll, so that'll come out next week, and then we'll have uh, episode 23 come out the week after that which uh, we'll be talking about uh, movie news and getting to our mutated messages, our our listener feedback. So thank you so much for listening. You can check us out at our official website, turtlepowerpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at TMNT Podcast. Follow myself at Fig Don Pat. You can follow Alex at A Rodriguez 2005 you can follow Darby at Darby T. Patton, as he has just recently changed his uh, Twitter handle. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash turtlepowerpodcast. Send us uh, your feedback via old-fashioned email at turtlepowerpodcast 
at gmail.com. Please, please, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And Song of the Show is going to be off the TMNT soundtrack. It's Amber Pacific with Fall Back Into My Life. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you so much for listening to the Turtle Power Podcast. And we'll talk to you next week. I know it's not-